everyone and welcome back to another episode of Mike's Mini Motors. So today we're getting back to the mini bike, uh, which we haven't done anything to in a while. It's, it's pretty filthy right now. Um, I brought it over to my cousin's house, it was a while back, last time I rode it, and we ripped around in his fields for a while, so it's really dirty and then it sat here and now it's too cold to take it outside and wash it, so it's dirty, it'll have to stay this way for a little while, but um, what we're going to finally get to is I picked up this clutch cover from gopowersports.com um, to protect your ankle and pant leg and everything from the clutch here because it's already bit me a couple of times. But we'll need to notch it out a little ways here to fit around the frame of this bike because it's not necessarily meant for this bike, but we'll make it work. And then we also have the rear sprocket adapter, which if you watch the aluminum anodizing uh, video, that's when we anodize this black. And then I've also got my 59 tooth sprocket here. So we'll be going from a 75 down to a 59. So it won't be as torquey and, you know, real, like the acceleration to the low end won't be as, as good, but I'll get a better top end. And this thing was already pretty sketchy at the low end that if you weren't careful, it'd flip out from underneath you. So do that. And then the last thing we're also going to do is when I had this at my cousin's house, we don't know how or when it happened, but this rear fender somehow got two giant cracks in it. So I'm going to pull it off and we'll plastic weld it back together and clean it up, make it look nice again. And yeah, so what we're, we're going to start is we're going to go ahead and get the fender off because it's really easy. And then the rear wheel and the whole axle and everything off so that we can get the sprocket adapter on there. And then after that, we'll move on to the clutch cover and everything. So let's get to it. So as you can see here, got the wheel off there. It's actually fairly simple. A uh, couple bolts to get the fender off and then just the axle and taking the chain off. So that was fairly simple. Now we can take the wheel and get this sprocket off of here and get my adapter on there so that we can put these sprockets on there. So there's a sprocket adapter put on. It was fairly simple. You just have the, the six bolts here that I had to remove to get the, the old sprocket off. Put the adapter on there and then screw on your sprocket. And that's all there really is to that. So that could get slapped back in there now. Yeah, because I can do the, the fender afterwards and the clutch cover. So let's get this thing belt, bolted back up. fairly simple just put the axle bolt back in there and tighten it down you can see now the split sprocket and the adapter and everything are in there and I like it looks pretty good so next we'll get to let's put this clutch cover on here and you can kind of see like this goes over the clutch there if you look at the back it's hitting the frame so I'm gonna have to loosen up the engine on its adjustment bolts and move it all the way back so that I have like worst case scenario of how far to cut that 
and then I can readjust it when I put this all back together. I'm probably going to have to shorten the chain too because I got the different sprocket on there now. So let's get this clutch cover on. All right, so I went ahead and I just put some bolts in here with the clutch cover is going to attach to, but they're, I don't have the right size. So these are like, I think metric ones or whatever. They, they get like a thread in there and they stop. So I just got them to give me locating points, but um, trying to get that in there, the, the header is in the way. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that off too. I might need to repaint that. It got kind of gross, but anyways, I'll get that pulled off and then we can start to line up this clutch cover and see what we're dealing with. All right, so now the header's off there, so we can line up this clutch cover. Just setting it on the bolts. And now I can take a Sharpie and mark on the, oops, sorry, mark on the frame there, or not on the frame, on the clutch cover, where I need to channel. And then I'm not sure how, I'll have to hold it back off and see, kind of eyeball how far in I have to go. Okay, so I got the Sharpie marks here to show where I need to notch it there. I'm just going to go to the line there above COM and use that as my line. And then down here, I'll extend it down. Pretty much, I'm just going to end up cutting off the dot .com. And then it should line up. So I'll get to the grinding and see how this thing turns out. So I took it to the grinder and now it just says go power sports no dot com uh, I tried to make the line as clean as I could and clean it up a bit it's hard to get grinder in there and I have a little dremel but it's battery operated and the battery sucks in it so do what I could but now you can see that's how it's gonna go right there looks pretty good but I'm going to paint it so it's not getting put on tonight for two reasons because one I gotta paint it and two like I said these bolts that I put in there are just they're the wrong thread so they're barely in there just to give me a space to mock that up too. And I think I'm gonna hit the header with a little more paint but what we got left tonight is fixing that rear fender so let's get to that next. Hey everyone um, so for some weird reason these a couple of these next few clips the audio didn't get recorded at all I'm not quite sure why um, so what I'm gonna do is either I'll add some subtitles in there or maybe just record some like my voice and put it over top of the video just so you guys can understand what's going on I, it's pretty fresh in my memory so I think I know exactly what I was trying to say and everything so it shouldn't be too far off but that's why these next couple of clips might look or sound kind of off is because of that so got this new camera for an early christmas present and still learning some things on it so hopefully it still turns out okay so here we go <laughs>
So here's the rear fender. I give her a quick wipe down with just a wet rag, just get some of the mud off. But you can see here the two big cracks. And I think why is because if you look here, this is this actually the stock mounting hole. And I had to drill this one because to put the Predator motor in here, I would have either had to cut a big hole in the fender to go around the head here, or I just made my own bracket here and extended this back. So it's probably just from the vibrations would be my guess. But I'll get it plastic welded back together and actually I'll reinforce it with some uh, metal mesh inside the weld. And I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, actually, I already filmed showing you guys on another project, but that's actually going to air after this one. So I'll show you again on this one. So let me get all my tools out and we'll get to it. All right, so if you've never plastic welded before, it's fairly simple, I think. What I do is just try to get the cracks to kind of line up as best as you can again. And then I'll usually just take my soldering gun, let it get hot for a second, and then try to line it up, like I said, the crack, and then kind of like regular welding, you just tack it in a few spots. Essentially, you're just melting the plastic back together. So there's that one, and you see it's it's holding. It's you can see the crack if you look really looking for it, but it's not too bad. And then what I do is I have this little uh, metal mesh grid stuff. Um, got it from my my wife's family, so I don't know exactly where they got it, but you just cut it into little squares. And then like I'll lay it on this first section of the cut. Make sure we crack. And then essentially you're just melting this wire mesh into the plastic. And then embedding it into the plastic so that just not only are you you know melting the plastic back to itself, but also you're embedding this mesh, which should help strengthen it so it shouldn't crack again. Can't guarantee it, but like I said shouldn't. So yeah, I'll just show you this one, and I just kind of go over every spot and make sure it's melted in. All right, so there's that one. Oh, crap. Pulled up over here. I was doing it a little too fast, just trying to do it for the video, but I'll have to push it back down in there. But the rest of this, I'll go ahead and do in the hyperlapse. You guys don't have to sit here and watch the entire process. It's the same thing over and over again. So see you when it's done. plastic welded up it's not the prettiest thing on the bottom side but it works um, I don't know if this is the you know the proper way they recommend doing it but it's the way I've done it in the past and works pretty good you know the cracks are for the most part put back together and or at least like you know you don't really see them that much but um, just don't look at the, bo the bottom side so now I can get this bolted back on which will only take me a couple of seconds and then that'll probably be it for tonight. I gotta wait for the clutch cover and the header to dry. And actually, I gotta put another coat on it and then dry. And then uh, tomorrow I can bolt all that back up. And then if we still don't have any snow, maybe I can take her for a spin. Fender is mounted back up, and you can see here what I was talking about with the the old or the stock hole was supposed to be there, but I had to move the whole 
fender back to be able to clear up front. And then I just made a little bracket under here to hold the front of it. But that might have been why it broke because we didn't hit like wreck or anything. But maybe just this out here flexing since it's, I don't know, not supported as far back as it normally is. But so that's going to go ahead and uh, end it for tonight. And then tomorrow I'll get back out here and hopefully get off work before it's dark and I can try to test drive this thing. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, so it's the next day now. And you can see I got the clutch cover bolted on there and the header back on. And they look pretty good. I did kind of rush yesterday just to get these painted. So, like, there are some runs if you look close on the clutch cover and stuff. And on the header, you can still see, like, the rough stuff. It was there already, and I just, if I would taking my time, I could have sanded it off. But it is what it is. So this thing is ready to come off the lift now. And I actually left work a little early today so that I can get home before it gets dark. Because usually, by the time I leave work, it's dark. Um, so let's get this thing off the lift and out on the street. accelerates much nicer it's better top end but I'm gonna call it quits for tonight because I realized the neighbor is doing a music lesson over there and this thing is loud so all right so there you have it the mini bike is now done well, at least for now um, it's much more enjoyable to ride it's also much safer to ride because now that, that clutch covers on there you won't hit your ankle on it you shouldn't catch your pants and I wouldn't say you, you can't but um, but yeah, then with the, the gearing change with the sprocket adapter back here, it was much nicer to ride. Like you get on it and it's not going to flip out from underneath you and, it, but it still accelerated really nicely and also had the better top end. So I was able to go faster before it seemed like you'd get on it and it would take off and like two seconds in your top speed at 21 or something like that. Um, I'd have to do some math to figure out what the top speed of this one should be, but I haven't yet. Um, but I think that's going to be it for the mini bike for at least a while because it's too cold to be riding it and I'm getting low on funds. <laughs> um, what I'd like to do is, you know, if I can get some money together, I wouldn't mind switching from this clutch to a torque converter because this clutch is just a cheap one. It's already making sound and stuff like that. And a torque converter just gives you much better uh, acceleration, top end and everything. And then maybe eventually either swap out the, the flywheel for a billet aluminum one so I feel confident in removing the the governor so that the stock flywheel is not going to blow up on you. Or you can debate adding the charging coil and electric start to it, which would be not really necessary, but just kind of cool. And then I can have headlights, taillights, all the, the works. But for now, that's going to be how it sits. And yeah, so that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video. So if you liked the content, go ahead and hit the like button. If you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And leave me a comment if you got anything you want to tell me. So thanks a lot. You guys have a good one. Also, one other note. Uh, don't be like me. And I, had, I grabbed my helmet to ride. And then set it down and forgot to put it on before I actually rode. It's, it's sitting right here, but I forgot it like a, a dummy. So don't be like me and wear your helmet.